All right, my next guest is the new CES bantamweight champion of the world, and of course, it is Jay Perrin on the show. Jay, how are you? I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm great, but clearly not as good as you, man, after winning, uh, you know, a, an impressive fight over a really tough opponent. I mean, Josh is, is no joke, and you really went in there, and, and you put him out cold. First, I just wanted to get your initial reaction as to that first round uh, and the difficulties of all those scrambling and, and how much energy you guys exerted going into that second round. Uh, well, I'll, first and foremost, I don't get tired. So um, that's just a mentality thing. So it doesn't really matter. I can keep the same pace for five rounds. I actually think I'm better suited for five-round fights because I can just keep going forever. I, I just can't stop. Um, for him, I mean, th the first round we knew was going to be the toughest because we knew he comes out strong. And um, I actually didn't know that he was a, a D2 Nebraska guy until I heard the commentary after. I'm like, oh, word. Well, good to know. So um, we knew that his wrestling was good, and we knew that, uh, he was going to come at us like a bat out of hell. And I figured that as soon as we settled in and found our range, um, the boxing discrepancy and everything else would show itself. So um, he came out, he swung for the fences with literally every shot that he threw at me, he was trying to knock me out with. Um, and that just kind of came back to bite him, I think, because uh, I don't back up. I don't take a back step. And I think that that kind of broke him in the end there. I know this is the fight game and you need to have the utmost confidence before you climb into the cage, but he was saying some stuff prior to the fight just about him, you know, feeling very confident that he's going to win and he's going to put you out. Does that type of stuff ever bother you or is that pretty much just par for the course regardless of who your opponent is? Everybody's going to say that, man. You know what I mean? No one's gonna, actually going to say, you know, this guy might kick my ass. You know what I mean? Everybody's going to say, I'm going to try and put him out or I'm going to do this or that. And, and I don't really pay attention to it. I know how hard I work and I know that nobody's just going to fucking roll over on me that's for damn sure so if you think you're going to put me out you're damn sure in for a night because no one's just gonna you know beat my ass there's not a single person in the world that on my best day is just gonna beat my ass so um you know when people say things like that it's good for them to be confident so that when i crush that confidence it, it's all the sweeter what, what did your team tell you after the first round going into round two did you feel you guys won the first round or did you think josh did and what were some of the adjustments that they wanted you to make uh, going into that second round uh so the first i mean the first was close honestly it depended on how you looked at it i think that if i won it i, I would say i personally thought that he won the first round um uh, uh my corners are pretty pretty objective about stuff i asked that i don't want them to sugarcoat anything if i'm down around i need you to tell me um, so I think it was close, depending on how you looked at it. Um, going into the second, it was really, uh, all right, now we know what he's got. We know that he's throwing there. He's already exhausted. Like the first thing that I said to my corner was he's already wheezing. You know, he's, he's breathing heavy already. Um, a lot of nervous energy from Josh Smith um, coming into that fight. You could sense it. Um, and so going into the second, it was really pressure, 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 find my range and uh, start going to work with my boxing and then see what see what presents itself. So um, like I said, we 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 gonna just you know let the let the fight come to us. We knew what he wanted what he wanted to do from round one. We weren't gonna let him do it in round two, um, and then you know from there we got the finish. Yeah, run me through that finish. You you had a choke initially, then you had to readjust, and you ultimately got the. I mean, you choked him out unconscious, man. So tell me how that all set up and how you were able to to get it, get the job done. Uh, so he shot in. He turned into. I always think of the Nate Diaz. Oh, you're a wrestler now. Um, thing. So uh, you know, we started getting into some good exchanges, but I think I was getting the better of it as far as damage wise. I kept. I wobbled him a few times, um, and buckled his knees. So I think that he turned into a. He took the shot and I uh, stuffed it, and I think that was really the last bit that he had. He gave up his back pretty quickly. Um, he ducked his chin really well, but I knew that. Uh, so if you watch the replay, he only he doesn't really go for two on one and try and pull the arm down. He's just kind of pushing the elbow up. Um, he was already tired, and so that's really not a good defense. That's not really fighting the choke at all. It's just maybe relieving some pressure. So it, after the first choke, um, I realized that I was going to either lose the position, trying to go for the submission, or, you know what I mean, I'm just going to stay on top. So I, I, you know, cooler heads prevailed, and I went, all right, well, I'm either going to get this choke or get on top and land elbows. And uh, once I got on top, he turned back over wisely because I was going to elbow him to death. Um, and he gave me his neck, you know what I mean? As soon as I put my palm to palm, you know what I mean? Because I, I don't go for the traditional bicep. I go for my hands like this and I'll get behind your back. As soon as I clamp that, um, I felt it was over because, again, he wasn't really fighting the choke at all. He was already really tired. I think I had just broken him by that point. Um, and he wanted a way out. And he, you know what I mean? He didn't tap, but he found his way out. You know what I mean? I banished him to the shadow realm a little bit. So, um, you know, that's how it really came up. I was going to get the finish one way or another. I did say 
before the fight that I would finish it inside three, and I got it done in two. So, had a schedule. Really, really impressive victory. And, you know, you got that big cut there under your, your left eye. Clearly a lot of blood in the first round. Did that ever affect you at all in, in the first or second? Or uh, No, not really. I asked for that, man. You know what I mean? So, like, I, I genuinely love what we do. And so, like, I, I've always asked, like, I've, in, in a lot of interviews throughout my career, I've said, I hope there's a guy that's going to bring the dog out of me and, um, you know, makes me bleed and I want to be covered in my blood or his blood or whatever. Blood doesn't bother me. It's what we're after. You know, so, um, you know, I've never really been cut open like that, like this in a fight. Um, so it was really my first experience of having like an actual cut that needed stitches in the middle of the fight. Um, but I thought, you know, my fight or flight response was great. You know, I, I, I thought that it might freak me out, but honestly, it just made me more excited to be in there um, to know that I'm actually in a fight now. So um, there's a lot of the times when, you know, I go into a fight thinking that it's going to be a war. I've trampled over people. And so, you know, to to have the heat of my own blood on my face really was uh, quite the experience. And I, I loved it. it. Just just amped me up even more. And this clearly is it's a very prestigious promotion. CES, one of the hands down best MMA promotions across the country here. What does that mean to you, man, to go in there? And this is your CES debut. You went in there and captured the bell in your CES debut. Very impressive. You know what? I've been dude, I've been around this game for a long time since I was 14. So I've been watching all the all those CES champs that have gone to the UFC. I was I've been watching them for years. You know what I mean? From you know uh, you know Andre Yule to Sukumtov to Tony Gravely to all these people. And so like I always thought as a kid, maybe when I was like 16. I'm like I'm gonna fight for this belt one day. I know I'm gonna fight for this belt one day, and I'm gonna win it. Um, so you know, like, and it just never lined up. You know what I mean? It's really for whatever reason we just couldn't get it done. And um, you know, after a really long time, uh, I got the call and it means a lot to me, you know what I mean? Because this is a legitimate world champion. I can, at the end of my life, at the very least, I can say if I didn't become UFC champion or anything like that, I can say, you know what, man, I, I fought some of the best people in the world. So, um, it means a lot to me because as, as a guy that's been doing this for so long to have an accomplishment like that will stick with you. And I have something to, you know, if I have children to, to pass on to them and say, you know, I, I, your dad was kind of cool at one point. So, you know, I, the CES belt means a lot to a lot of people in the Northeast. Um, so I'm, I, I'm, I'm very honored to be among one of the people that has held this belt. Yeah, no doubt about it. Very well said. Did you get a chance to talk to Josh afterwards? And if so, what was that exchange like? Uh, you know what, man, I, it's hard to talk to people right after you lose, they lose or after you beat them, you know what I mean? Cause you're trying to be nice. You know, you want to, you know, be sportsman. Like I gave him a kiss, told me, you know, I kissed him on his head and said, Hey man, you know, thank you for the challenge. Cause he did, you know, he, he did push me in the first round. Um, you know, I, I talked to him very briefly, but he was on the phone and I'm sure his pride hurt. And, you know, it's just kind of an unspoken thing. I, you know, I gave him a hug afterward where we were getting our checks and, uh, yeah, you know, I just said, Hey, good luck. We'll probably see each other again. He messaged me, you know, a couple of days later, he's like, Hey man, I'll see you again sometime. And I welcome that. I hope I do, you know, so. He's a great guy, honestly. Josh is Josh is a, a tremendous person, and you know what I mean. I, I I he was really nice to me. He met my whole family in an elevator, and uh, just you know what I mean. Like it, we we shot the shit back and forth. He's a good guy, but at the end of the day, I got a job to do. You know what I mean. And being a nice guy isn't going to prevent me from doing my job. So um, I wish him the best. You know what I mean. He's he's, he's a game competitor, and we fine tune some things. He'll be back in there in, in no time. Yeah, and he is a great guy. I've interviewed him before, so uh, who knows when he'll be back. Maybe that will uh, that rematch can happen at some point down the line. One of the things that he said, you know, going into this fight was a win over you stamps his ticket to the UFC. He felt he was going to be in the UFC. You yourself, you fought at Contender Series before. It's been a little while now, 2019, uh, since you had that Contender Series bout. But where does this put you now? I mean, you must feel like you're on the doorstep of maybe getting a second crack at Contender Series or a short notice UFC call, like wh where's your head at right now as far as what's next? I'm trying not to get too ahead of myself. You know what I mean? Like obviously I'm in a great position, and but the businessman in me is is remembering that. You know what I mean? Like I after the, the Contender Series thing, you know what I mean? I went on this weird ego trip that you know Dana said I won, and so this and that, and the world owes me something, and it doesn't. You know what I mean? The world oh, the world doesn't owe me a goddamn thing, and um. So I'm not really trying to count my chickens before they hatch. Ideally, I'd like, you know, Dana to call me and be like, here's a three-fight contract. You know what I mean? That would be great. But, um, you know, man, whatever comes next comes. You know, uh, I, I, I'm just so happy to be back in the cage and being active again after a year and a half and all that's happened. 
Um, if they need me to keep stacking bodies, then I'll do that until I'm completely undeniable. You know what I mean? If it, if this is a, wasn't the one, then I'll keep doing it. I'll get another belt and another one and another one and another one. You know what I mean? Whoever you want to put in front of me, I'll mow down um, to prove my point. Um, I already think I'm, I could beat a top 20 guy in the world. You could give me anybody in the top 20 and I'll, I'll, I'll take them head on and, and come out unscathed. Um, I really have a good measuring stick with a lot of the high level guys out here. I'm in Vegas. You know what I mean? I get, I get all types of talent that walk in here and I know how close the gap is between me and even some top 10 guys. And um, it's not as big as you'd think. So um, it puts me in a good position. I know how good I am. I know how hard I work, um, but I'm not going to count my chickens before they hatch. You know what I mean? So if I get the call, then I don't, then I do, but if I don't, then whatever, give me the next body. It's a good outlook to have. What what is that cut like for you to get down to 135? Is it pretty easy? It's, it's gotten easier over time. You know, so back home, I really didn't. So back home, I got maybe three days of actual training in a day, only a week. You know what I mean? And so the cuts were a little more difficult because I lived an hour away and um, it took a lot of traveling for me to do. Here, it's not as hard because I'm in the gym six days a week, um, every day. I'm here every day. And, um, um, it doesn't take as long for me to get down there. I cut from about 165. So I'm, I'm pretty big. Yeah. I'm a pretty big guy when it gets up there. Um, but, uh, this cut was easy. You know I mean? The last two pounds kind of gave me some trouble in the last end, but I, I woke up at like 38 the day before, you know what I mean? But or the day of, and we took a couple baths and we may wait, you know, so, um, it's gotten a lot easier over time. I've, I've really gotten to know my own body and, how it how it works and you know what I mean like what I have to do to get to weight so uh, I'm a professional in that sense although I do love you know Randy Costa loves him some peanut butter cups but he is not the only one who obsesses about peanut butter cups so um, you know the the cuts the cut has gotten a lot easier over time that's that's good to hear man now you're obviously at Syndicate MMA in Vegas making the transition from you know New England uh, Lowell Massachusetts to to Syndicate in Vegas what has that been like how how much have you evolved as a fighter since you've been down there in Vegas uh, I, I can't leaps and bounds really honestly and I can see it even in myself um, how I think how I'm mapping out a fight while I'm in it you know what I mean and again I, I had a year and a half layoff so I really didn't know how I would like my synapses would fire in the cage and I was on top of everything. You know what I mean? I saw everything. John Wood and I click really well and I understand. And I think that's a huge part of a coach and athlete's relationship is being able to, to mesh well. Um, and um, I think, I think just under his instruction and I, you know, I got Mike Pyle and Frank Neer and all these guys that I get to pick their brains all the time. And I just think that um, because I'm around so many like-minded people like myself, um, it gives me that, that extra drive. So, Back home, you know what I mean? I'm kind of from the hood a little bit. So, I, you know, a lot of people just sit around and, you know, they, they smoke weed all day and they're not doing stuff with themselves. And that kind of catches up with you no matter how much am ambition you have. So to move out here and be around people that are like-minded and easy to get along with and, you know what I mean, great teammates um, and, and, and want to see you succeed is, has been tremendous for me mentally as well as, as, well as the training. Because hard work never is, you know, it's never a problem for me. I work hard no matter where I'm at. But, um, you know, the mental side of things has, has grown so much that I think that has made me a lot more complete and um, I'm definitely more of a chess player inside the cage um, these days. How long have you been out there for now? Uh, I've only been out here about seven months now. Okay, so it's a, a fairly... April? April. Okay, so it's a, it's a fairly recent transition. You must not be missing the uh, the New England winters being in Vegas, right? <laughs> not at all i don't miss the new england summers you know what i mean <laughs> uh you never know what to wear in new england um i i love it out here it's it's actually like fall now so it's about like 80 degrees all the time and there's not really it rained a lot here i didn't know that that was a thing out here so i mean the summer was really great and um it's always sunny you're always in a good mood you know what i mean no one's and, and let me just say people are a lot less aggressive out here i'll give you know what i mean in, in, in new england you know, I'll give for a traffic, for example, in New England, someone would wholeheartedly let you hit them before you get to move into a lane. Out here, people are just like, you know what, man, have it, have the lane. You know, we're good. Um, so the, the vibe is a lot different. Um, I think it's just been very, very, very nice out here. You know what I mean? I, I think this is probably the best move of my career to come out here. 
Yeah, I know all about the uh, the New England analogies that you're using. As I was telling you before we went live, I'm from the the general area where, where you're at. So you must be a, a Patriots fan, right? New England sports. How do you think our Pats are going to do this year? Mac Jones, baby. Mac Jones, my guy. I think we're going to do great this year. I think that we're going to do – now, again, I'm holding off judgment because last year Cam came out the gate firing really well. You know what I mean? But then he got the yips halfway through. So um, I'm holding off my full judgment on Mac Jones and the, and the system. But so far, for a rookie, Bama roll tide. You know what I mean? He's, he's looked great. Um, I'm really excited for the future of the Patriots. We've been spoiled for so many years. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm not still watching Tom Brady. So, you know, you know, you know I'm still rooting for the Bucks a little bit because Tommy touchdowns. That's Teflon Tommy right there. And, uh, you know what I mean, I, my loyalty is to him for sure still. So these colors don't run for the Patriots, but I'll always root for Tommy. Yeah, I'll actually be at the Buccaneers Bills game uh, on December 12th. I got a buddy that's down there in Tampa that has season uh, tickets. So I'm heading down there to, to watch Tommy play. I'm a little conflicted, man, because I, I want to wear my Pats gear, you know, but uh, in Tampa, just like, I don't know what, what I should do. So. It'll be a Pats Tom Brady jersey. Yeah. Just see how many picks you get. People are going to be pissed. They <laughs> all, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like on this lonely island out here because everybody hates the Pats. <laughs> I mean, I'm just like whatever. I'm just gonna flex on everybody. Everybody's a Raiders fan, so it's like you can't really hate me for being a Pats fan. You're a Raiders fan. You choose that. You know what I mean? So uh, that's tough. Yeah, well, big football fan uh, myself, so I, I think the Pats will be just fine this year. I appreciate you diving in and giving a little bit of, of your uh, analysis as to what we can see this uh, 2021 football season. Last question for me, man, before I let you go. You know, when can we expect to see you back in the cage? You know, if it's not for Contender Series or a short notice UFC fight, you know, I imagine defending that CES belt would be a priority of yours. Would it be before the end of 2021, or are we going to have to wait until 2022? Oh, God, hopefully not. You know, hopefully not. The thing about it is, if, like, I've been gone for a year and a half, but not for, like, not trying. You know, we've been trying to get people to, to sign uh, a bout agreement. And, you know, when it, everybody says that they're about it until the time, it comes time to send the contract, and then they have a whole bunch of excuses why they can't fight me. And that's whatever. You know what I mean? So um, I'm going to heal up. I got this cut under my eye for, like, two weeks, you know what I mean, with the stitches and stuff, so I can't really spar or anything like that for now. But uh, I'm hoping late December, I mean, uh, late November, early December, hopefully. Um, I want to get one more in. Felt really good to be back in there, and uh, I felt great. So um, I'm not trying to be gone for another year. You know what I mean? I don't, got, I don't got that much time left on my career. You know what I mean? I'm 28 now. I got to get this shit rolling. So, um, you know, 10th victory. I'm looking for number 11, be it, you know, in the UFC or be it whatever. Like, like I said, man, I, got, I don't care. Whatever comes next comes next, you know, uh, if, if – the UFC, of course, I want to be in the UFC. That's what we all we're all after, right? But you know, if you expect things and then they don't come, you get disappointed by it. So, hopefully, by December, I get a call from somebody. If not, then you'll see another body get stacked up, and I'll just have another piece of hardware to to uh, show off. So, we'll see. I'm hoping I'm hoping late late November, early December. Well, definitely looking forward to seeing what is next for you, regardless of what it is. Again, Jay, a pleasure interviewing you for the first time, my man. The new CES Bantamweight Championship of the World, Jay Perrin. Before I let you go, man, tell people where to follow you on social media. And if you have anyone to thank, the floor is yours. Uh, yeah, so I just want to thank everybody at, at Syndicate MMA, obviously, Big John. And, um, you know, all my teammates have been so great. All my sponsors. My manager, Lance Foudy from Iridium Sports Agency. Everybody been there. It's, it's, it takes a village, man. So. Um, you know, I might be the one that gets in there, but there, there's so much more behind the scenes that people deserve more credit. Um, let's see. You can find me at Joker underscore gang 35 on Instagram. I don't have a Twitter yet. I was told that I have to do that because I'm kind of a big deal now, I guess. So, um, you know, I'll find one. And then, you know, when I make a Twitter, people will know about it because I don't ever stop talking shit. So, um, you know, just find me on Instagram, Joker underscore gang 20, uh, 35. Thanks to everybody. And thank you for having me, man.